Hi, dear friends and colleagues. My name is Chris Roppelt. I'm an expert in intercultural communication, also the CEO and founder of Agency for International Cooperation. And here today, I'd like to inform you a little bit about how to conduct an efficient small talk in the Middle East. Specifically, I'm targeting such countries as the United Arab Emirates and Saudi Arabia. However, this video is going to be helpful to anyone who is trying to master small talk in the Arabic world and beyond, because some of the tips will be extremely relevant for any other culture. Specifically, it's going to be helpful to those countries, cultures and regions for whom small talk is not exactly the essential part of daily or business communication. So if you feel fine and if this video finds you well, I hope we're ready to start. So today we are effectively going to cover some practical tips on small talk for the Middle East. And I will be super happy to share with you some of the things which you need to keep in mind before going into the negotiations or a business meeting or even a personal meeting with the colleagues from the Middle East. So I'd like to explain to you to begin with, why do we even need small talk in the Middle East? Why it's such an extensive and important part of the communication? First of all, because when we speak about such countries as Saudi Arabia or the United Arab Emirates, we must say that this is a pretty closed culture, a thing in itself. Even though there are a lot of expatriates in these countries, I do understand that this might sound a little illogical, but the country of the local people, the Emiratis and the Saudis, it's actually a pretty close community. So anyone who comes from outside is seen de facto as an alien. And what is more important, these people need to know how to trust you because trust is a very important integral part of the local culture and the local conversation. The other thing is the general context and the vibe are sometimes even more important than the content of the discussion. That is specifically why you need the time to set it. You need the time to fine tune the communication vibes. This is specifically why sometimes small talk holds even longer than the actual conversation. Another thing is it allows the interlocutors to learn about the personalities of each other. And even though personal life is something pretty tabooed in terms of the detailed discussion, it is still very important not to learn about the family or the spousers or the children of each other. It's actually very, very important to learn about the characteristics of another person. So that again, getting back to point number one, you learn how to trust them. There, then rush is seen as something low and undesirable. A person of a higher status, a person who is the master of their life, doesn't require rush to go into business straight ahead. You might enjoy this life, you might need to take time and to explore the person in front of you. So no rush, take it easy and take it slow. How long and big is a small talk in the Arabic world or in the Middle East, as you might say that? And I'm specifically speaking about the Arabic world because Israel as a part of the Middle East is something very, very different. And Turkey is also not considered to be a part of the Middle East by the Turks themselves, to be honest. So how is that actually defined as a small talk? First of all, this is defined as something quiet lasting, sometimes from five minutes to 50, because time is not linear. We are not seeing time as something that is set from 5.5 to 5.25 p.m. today, but we are seeing it as something that is changeable, that is very flexible and non-linear. There is no very specific definition of when a business meeting is actually turning into a business meeting rather than is just being a communication of two people. Business may be discussed after the second or the third meeting and sometimes a lot of European, American or Russian clients are being very appalled by the fact that they are coming into a conversation and de facto none of the business is being discussed. But after the third meeting in a row they see that there is a significant progress in the business dealing. Why? Because after the first, second and the third meeting the relation is already being established. So that is why it's specifically important to master the small talk which is much longer than, hi, how are you? I'm good. And you? I'm fine. Thank you. That is much more and beyond than that. And of course, there is also a need sometimes to wait for a decision maker to come into the room to join the conversation. That is why sometimes a less senior members of the delegation might be willing to take time to start the conversation, to relax a little bit before the actual decision maker comes into the room. But don't expect that when the decision maker comes into the room, you'll rush and jump into business. Far from that, as I've already mentioned earlier. 
There are a couple of things that you might need to remember when it comes to the topics to avoid during the small talk. And it again reflects pretty much any intercultural conversation, regardless of where you come from and who is your vis-a-vis. -vis. So the three taboo topics, which are very, very important to remember, whatever cultural context you take, are politics, religion, and sex. Sorry for my wrong cross over here, but it's not very, very uh, common for me to be working with such a fantastic whiteboard. Anyway, what I want to say is these three topics are being very, very, very undesirable for any discussion. So please keep in mind that these three things, politics including the politics of your country and the politics of the country of your vis-a-vis, doesn't really matter. Please try to avoid these discussions. Even if you belong to the same religious groups, there are such tiny particularities which usually spark a very emotional response. That's why I kindly recommend you to avoid these topics when it comes to taboo. Things like how do you see the politics of your king or do you usually go to prayers at five o'clock or um, uh, could you tell me a little bit more about your personal relations with your wife or do you have a second wife? Something like that is also belonging to partly belonging to this point, the questions about family. Detailed questions is something that is not very acceptable, so please avoid uh, asking in specific details. Some, something like, is your family okay? Is everyone in your family doing well? Are actually very desirable, but detailed family questions are far from there. Your psychological condition, something that is seen very common in the European or uh, in the American culture and Australian culture as well, something that you might see very, very normal in your daily routine, such as burnout, depressions, etc. Uh, antidepressants, this is something that is far from being discussed in these communities. So please try to avoid these topics if you don't want to be seen as somehow an undesirable colleague. And I'm not saying that you should lie or be dishonest. I'm just asking you to kindly avoid these topics, specifically in the small talk before you know a person very, very well. Women and relations, especially about women's rights in the Middle East, this is something tabooed as well. So you never know what kind of attitude your counterpart has to the rights of women. Uh, at least if you are not specifically working in this direction, it will be very desirable to avoid that simply because this is a very painful and hurtful topic for many people, both for men and women in the Middle East. So the views might be very, very different. And again, it might be very, very emotional. Authorities as well, people who are in power, how they rule this specific country, how they rule this territory, and the authorities up the uh, corporate ladder. Ethnic origin, this might be also very, very tentative for people from different ethnic backgrounds. Questions like, where were your parents from? Like, really from? I mean it. I understand you are from the Emirates, but where exactly you've been, you've been arriving from? This is something that can be very, very touching. So be beware of that and be mindful. And of course, avoid very direct criticism. Criticism to the people you both know, criticism to the authorities, as I've mentioned here. Direct criticism is seen as something that can be later used against your vis-a-vis. -vis. Well, if you criticize somebody like that, would that actually be very, very okay for the people to be open and honest with you? Maybe you will criticize them in the long run. Who knows? Anyway, keep these things in mind and I hope that you'll be avoiding, at least in the first small talk conversations with the new people, with the people you don't know very, very well, something, this is definitely something to be avoided. And one more thing, be mindful that in your culture, it might be a totally okay to know somebody for two or three months and already say that this is your colleague or friend. In the Arabic world, I would say that the acquaintance is something that happens during the years. So before getting close to somebody, it may take years to establish a relationship. For now, I'd like to suggest you several questions and comments that I believe will actually be very, very suitable and effective for your first uh, small talk conversation. For example, start with a compliment. It's always very, very helpful. We really like it, your office. It's very, very well designed or we like your building. Fantastic interior. As you can see, this is not exactly a small talk question. This is more of a comment, but it leads to a discussion of design, architecture, history of a company, something that can be very, very flattering to your counterpart. We are very lucky to have a chance to meet you in person, raising the status of your counterpart. 
It's is it always hot like that in September or in any other months? If you arrive to uh, the countries of the um, Arabic Gulf, there is very, very high chance that it will pretty much always be hot. So starting the conversation of the weather will may provoke um, a conversation about the country or the culture. So always very neutral and very safe to begin with. Another question is, it's our first time in X country and we really like it or we are excited or we are thrilled. Um, maybe a follow up question on what would you recommend to visit as a place of interest? Something very, very neutral and very, very safe. One more thing is, have you ever been to and then you name the country of origin. Have you ever been to Chile, Serbia, Norway, Denmark, etc. And then again, you may refer to the country of your origin to speak a bit more about the cultural differences, etc. Um, thank you very much for your hospitality. We've had such a kind reception with your subordinates or with your team members or with your colleagues. Always very, very flattering, indirect compliment to the leadership. And several tips to finalize my ideas. Please allow your host to start and lead the small talk conversation. Don't push too much. Pushing is something that is seen very undesirable in the Middle Eastern communication. So please give them a chance to lead and steer. Be prepared to answer personal questions or to avoid them politely. If you wish, get prepared. How are you going to answer to the questions about your marital status or about your personal or religious preferences? But there is very high chance that religious politics and sex will never be touched. Maybe your family issues will be uh, under the small talk question. And don't rush your vis-a-vis -vis to move to business. This is something definitely very undesirable. Uh, the vis-a-vis -vis knowing that they are a host of this space will be responsible for moving to the business questions at their own pace. And this is very advisable to follow this pace. Inshallah is the phrase that is used by Middle Eastern people as something like, it's at the discretion of the God. Uh, let the God help with that. Let the God decide. And I hope, inshallah, everything will be fine with your small talk conversation during the meeting with your Saudi Arabian or um, Emirati or any other Middle Eastern partners. I do hope that this was a helpful video. I really hope that you enjoyed it. Shall you have any external questions or extra questions or clarifications? Please leave the comments or contact me in any possible way. The funny QR code relates to my LinkedIn. And if you have any questions related to intercultural communication, I'll be more than happy to support you on your communication journey. Bye-bye.